You sit down to do one simple task. You've got time, you've got motivation. You've even taken your ADHD medication. And yet, 40 minutes later, you're still scrolling, reorganizing, checking, preparing to start. Here's the strange part. You don't feel chaotic. You don't feel distracted. You actually feel karma. So why isn't anything happening? This is the moment most people misread ADHD medication. And it's the moment where treatment quietly goes off track because the medication did work, just not in the way you think. There are two common stories people tell about ADHD medication. Story one, if it works, you feel focused and motivated. Story two, if it stops working, you increase the dose or change the drug. Both are incomplete. In this video, I want to give you a different way of thinking. One I use clinically that explains why early response can be misleading, why it stopped working is often the wrong conclusion, and how medication actually fits into long-term ADHD treatment. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, consultant, psychiatrist, educator, and founder of PsychSync. And I've trained thousands of psychiatrists and mental health professionals in ADHD and other psychiatric disorders. And in a few minutes, I'll show you why feeling better is not the same as functioning better. How the brain converts the unexpected into the expected. And the one model that explains both success and disappointment with ADHD medication. Let's start off with myth busting first. The common myth, if the medication is right, motivation follows. Here's the reframe. This isn't motivation. This is what's known as signal clarity. ADHD isn't a lack of desire. It's not laziness either. It's a regulation issue. More specifically, what's known as a signal to noise problem. Your goals are often intact. Your intentions are often clear. What's impaired is the brain's ability to hold the signal long enough and cheaply enough in terms of energy expenditure to act. Medication doesn't create ambition. It doesn't create motivation. What it does is it reduces interference. And that distinction matters more than most people realize. In the next section, I'll define signal and noise in a way that actually predicts outcomes. So here's the central model. Signal is your brain's capacity to prioritize a goal and keep it online through effort. Noise is everything that disrupts this process. So noise includes internal distraction, emotional static, stress arousal, fatigue, and critically, effort cost. Effort cost is about how much effort does it take me to stay focused. This is the brain's internal calibration, and this calculation may have occurred years earlier. This isn't about attention alone. It's about how expensive attention feels. You see, in ADHD, effort costs are inflated, so the brain keeps switching, not because it wants novelty, but because it's trying to minimize cost. Therefore, this isn't just about poor discipline. This is about regulation. What medication does is it lowers the noise floor, particularly in salience and executive networks. But the key is that clarity alone doesn't decide direction. A quieter system still needs structure. And this is exactly why the life-changing phase can be deceptive. So let's explore this transformation trap. Week one can feel extraordinary. People say, I can finally think. The chatter in my mind's gone away. I feel normal. Everything makes sense now. Clinicians feel it too, a sense of resolution. But here's the issue. The brain is a prediction machine. It's designed to turn the unexpected into the expected. So the early contrast fades, not because treatment failed, but because normalization occurred. That's healthy neurobiology. When people measure medication by feeling, they unknowingly train themselves to expect a state. And when the state normalizes, they conclude the medication stopped working. Often, it didn't. What disappeared was the contrast, not the capacity. This isn't tolerance yet. This is adaptation. So the question is, if feeling is unreliable, what should we be measuring? The answer is, function. That's the real metric. ADHD medication should be judged by function, not feeling. So ask different questions. Not do I feel focused, but how long does it take me to start? Can I stay with effort when it's boring? When I drift, how quickly can I return 
Am I more consistent across the week, not just on good days? And all of this connected to certain activities. This reframes treatment completely because function compounds, feelings fluctuate. Remember, ADHD is a lifespan condition. We're not looking for a short-term performance boost. So let's now think about what it stopped working actually means. It stopped working usually means the noise changed. Here's the pattern I see repeatedly. Medication improves signal. It's like turning the switch on, the ability of the brain to tag relevant stimuli. I need to work. I need to focus on this task. So it provides the switch and the signals increase. But life adds noise. The aim of this stimulant is to dampen down this noise. But what if the noise is sleep debt, stress, burnout, emotional load, environmental chaos. The ratio worsens not because the signal disappeared, but because the noise rose faster. And this is where simplistic dose escalation fails and can even make things worse. The answer is noise management across systems. Think about sleep, circadian rhythm, emotional regulation, substance use, task architecture. Medication is one tool not the entire system. So how do we reframe the relationship with ADHD medication? Because there is something known as a cue trap. If the brain learns that a cue for a certain task, for example, preparing for an exam, links then to medication, which then links to feeling, which then results in relief, then the medication becomes the reward. What we're trying to do is to think about the actual task within the reward and motivation cycle. So what happens here is that people start monitoring, not really the task and the steps towards the task, but rather, do I feel it today? Is it working yet? That loop is risky. The better loop is cue, medication, activity, and then reward. So what we're trying to do is to use the clearer signal, the increased signal to noise ratio. The switch is turned on, higher signal, dampen noise, to plan, initiate, finish, repair avoidance, build routines, incorporate uncertainty. And one would recognize that all of these steps are extremely individual to each human being. Medication should scaffold behavior, not replace it. At this point, you might say, well, what about medication, timing, and rebound? That's absolutely relevant. We want to ensure adequate day coverage of medication all the way until optimal sleep. Here's a quick clinical clarification. Stable blood levels do not guarantee stable effect. Pharmacokinetics is not pharmacodynamics. Pharmacokinetics is about how the medication is absorbed, metabolized, excreted. Pharmacodynamics is the effect of the medication based on receptor dynamics. The effect varies with task demand, arousal, fatigue, emotional load, sleep debt, etc. So wearing off isn't always about duration. Sometimes it's about what the brain is being asked to do at that moment. That's why formulation, timing, sleep and context matter as much as dose. So if there's one thing I'd like you to remember from this video, is that ADHD medication doesn't give you a new self. What it does is gives you a cleaner signal. What you build while that signal is clearer, that's what lasts. That's what provides sustainable recovery. So when someone says, it changed my life, pause and build structure. And when someone says, it stopped working, look for the noise. I'm Dr. Sunil Reggae, and this is the Dr. Reggae channel. If you're a clinician and want to engage with deeper frameworks, diagnostic hierarchy, system level ADHD management, pain and psychiatry, sleep medicine, and lots more in psychiatry, then that's what we teach at the Academy by Psych Scene. So don't forget to check out the Academy here. If you liked the video, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for future videos. Let me know in the comment section what you think about the concept of signal and noise. Until next time, stay curious. Bye-bye.